Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. This video, I'm going to be showing you how I threw my Paris party. So firstly, I want to start off with the decor. And prior to 2020, I used to throw parties just because all of the time. So this is probably one of the first parties that I've thrown in a long time that didn't actually have a reason. Now, originally when I thought of this whole Paris themed party, I was just going to do a few desserts here and there, but then my friend and I decided to go all out. Surprisingly, I had to spend zero dollars on all of this decor because my friend had all of the stuff at her house already. I had no idea that she had such an obsession with flowers prior to this. So my general rule of thumb when setting up dessert and food tables is I really like to make sure that everything looks very packed in and there's different levels. Different levels make all of the difference. So I really tried to put things on pedestals. I used books as well to create that height. I also like to keep these crates on hand both in white and in brown. They work well for when you wanna do something really rustic or if you wanna do something a little bit more glam then I tend to stick with the white and I stick some bling wrap on the side of those. We will get back to the decor in a minute, but it's time to get to the desserts. So I've shown you guys how to make cream puffs on my channel lots of times, so I decided to just show you what I actually made. These are choux au craquelin, and I wanted to make it a flavor that wasn't too sweet, and all of my friends really enjoy this espresso kind of filling I have. Lots of whipped cream and espresso powder and a little bit of mascarpone just to get it a little bit thicker. And I made this little box for my friend. It was her birthday, so I decided to give this to her at school. And of course, I wanted to keep within the French theme for the food, so I'm making some macarons, separating my egg whites here. By the way, I've had some people correcting me, quote unquote, on my videos saying, they're not macarons, they're macaroons. And this literally is not a difference of pronunciation or saying things differently in different regions of the world. Macaroons are actually something completely different. Now this video isn't really a full-on tutorial. I can't give you the recipe that I use because I took a class for this, but I will link the class down in the description box below. So if you're local and in Vancouver, you can take it. Here I am sifting my almond flour and my confectioner's sugar. Now some people do skip that step. What it does is it gives you a little bit more of a smoother shell so you don't have big almond chunks in there. Now I'm coloring my macarons and I've done a lot of videos where I show you coloring lots of different types of macarons in one batch. So I was very relieved that I decided to just go with two colors this time. It made the measuring way, way easier and the coloring way easier. I really like to fold in my ingredients with this at first. I know traditionally this is not the way that I was taught, but I find if I don't fold in the ingredients first and I just go straight in to kind of mush and everything together, then I find it gets way too loose and the batter is a little bit too runny and then you end up with macarons that are running all over the place. So I really have learned, by the way, the way my macaron batter should be by making royal icing. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but making Making royal icing and the macaron batter is very similar in my opinion, especially if you're doing pipe and flood consistency. I find it's actually very close to one another. This is the thing with macaron making, even though somebody can tell you how to do it, you really, really have to do it for yourself over and over again until you get to a place where you can consistently make shells that are not running all over the place and that develop the proper feet. So now we're finally getting to that piping stage. I put my very beaten up stencil down and then I'm going to place my nonstick pro mat on top and I'm going to actually make these a lot larger. I know in the thumbnail you can't really tell how big the macaron is because of course our perspective of sizing is all off, but these are actually quite a bit larger. I would venture to say almost three times to four times bigger than the macarons I normally make. Now you might be wondering why I'm even bothering to use the stencil when I'm clearly not stenciling inside the lines. I am actually using it. I'm kind of going in between those circles and then judging how far I need to pipe out. Now when I originally did this, I actually swirled the macaron batter around and piped it that way, but I was not getting everything nice and even. So whenever you're doing circles, I highly recommend that you just kind of take a really large piping tip, squeeze in the center, and make sure that you stay nice and straight up and down with that piping bag. 
I am having to go through and make sure that I don't have any gaps in there. When I kind of slammed those pans down, which I always do, it's supposed to get rid of the air bubbles, but unfortunately, I think I had a little bit of water left in the lip of my pan, so water was kind of speckling my macarons. It doesn't affect the taste at all, it just affects the look a little bit. By the way, I wish I could share with you how I got these colors. It's just a huge mix of different pinks and different greens. So I don't think I'll ever be able to fully recreate this. And don't you hate that when you create something that you really like, but you didn't bother writing it down exactly what you used. So I'll probably be able to get this close again, but not quite the exact same pinks and greens that I want. So these came out of the oven. I baked them for a little bit longer this time and a little bit slower because they're so large but I was really, really happy. I got a nice even bake on them. I was reading this tip that you should put tin foil on it if you don't want it to brown, but honestly, that didn't work out for me, so I highly recommend not doing that. For the fillings, I'm going with a ganache filling and a vanilla bean filling. I finally have vanilla bean, and whenever I do, I just use it on everything. So what you wanna do with your vanilla bean is you split it down the center, take the back of your knife, not the sharp part, and then you're going to scrape the pods. And you'll notice I'm scraping it several times. I really wanna get as much of that pod out as possible. I took a little bit of vodka and luster dust and mixed it in so that it's nice and splattery. And then I'm just taking a little brush and splattering it all over the place. You can put something down underneath this so you're not getting splatter everywhere, but I figure it's easy enough to wipe, so might as well go with it. Now I'm going in and I'm matching my shells. You'll notice how some of those are a little bit sunken in. That's because I tried to cover it with that tin foil, and that's what I mean by not really working out. It kind of indents your shells. Again, doesn't affect the flavor, but you don't want indented shells. So I've had this vision of using fresh raspberries in my head for months now, and I finally have a good opportunity to use them in my macarons. So I'm basically kind of creating a flower shape, and then I'm using my vanilla bean Italian meringue buttercream and placing it in between. From my guests, I heard that it was nice and tart and a mix of sweet, so if you're not into too sweet of macarons, highly suggest that you use fresh fruit, especially if you're not going to be freezing these. So I used a dotting pattern to create the dam for those so that I could get as much chocolate ganache in there as possible. Moving along, I decided to make some Earl Grey meringue batons, and you'll notice that I'm really not going with a color theme for this. I'm trying to do a bunch of different colors that just kind of match the florals that we picked out. So I'm going with a kind of grayish blue here, and I'm using the Italian meringue method to create these meringues. As usual, it is my favorite, favorite method. You come out with a really nice, smooth meringue that has a really good hold to it. Then I'm taking my 1M tip, and I'm just doing this piping pattern where I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm really trying not to let go, but if you do have to let go, then you can go ahead and start it again, and it won't look like you're restarting in the middle or anything like that. So when I'm making desserts for a party, I'm always thinking about which thing has to go first, which things can I make in advance, and which things need to be made right at the last minute. So for the cream puffs, I actually made those the day before, and I froze them. Now, that really isn't the best way to do it if you want super fresh cream puffs. What I should have done is I should have made those shells the day of, and then I should have filled them right before serving. But I wanted to gift some to my friends, so I knew I needed to make those in advance. And for the macaron shells, you could definitely do that in advance, but because I was using the fresh raspberries, I decided to just make them all on the same day. So I made the macarons, and while the batter was resting and developing that film on top, then I got to making these meringues. And these meringues take a long time to bake, so I knew I needed to get those done early. Now it feels great once everything is all ready to go and we're finally at that stage, but I was a little bit stressed because I was rushing against the natural daylight. I always find the natural daylight gives me the most beautiful photos, so I was trying to plate things as quickly and as efficiently as possible before the sun went down. I can't wait till it's those summer months again when I get a little bit more natural light and a little bit more leeway. So the plan was this table that's filled with all of the different recipe books was going to be dedicated to all of the desserts, and the other table was going to be dedicated to all of those meats and cheeses and breads. Time to put down all of the cream puffs. I absolutely love this tray. I believe it's from Ikea. And whenever I have the opportunity, I like to decorate on site. I mean, I literally only had to walk about 10 steps to this part of my house, but I like to decorate once it's all plated because then you don't run the risk of bumping things and it's a lot easier to transfer things. So I'm just taking a little bit of whipped cream. I didn't add anything to it. It's just whipped cream with a tiny amount of sugar, no stabilizer. And then I placed 
focusing on this really, really delicious espresso dragé that I picked up from a local bakery. It's also where I picked up all of the croissants because, of course, I didn't have time to make croissants that takes a long, long time, especially if you're doing it at home. And I wanted to indicate the different types of cream puffs here. So for the ones with the raspberry on top, it's just a classic cream puff. There is just vanilla bean in there and nothing really else in there. So that was definitely for people that enjoy a little bit of a simpler flavor. And then placing down these meringue batons, which I absolutely love the look of. Now, if you live in a place that's really humid and you're afraid of things going soggy, put down a little bit of cornstarch on there and a little bit of paper towel or a napkin if you want it to look more pretty. And that way it'll soak all of that extra moisture up and stay nice and crisp. And this cake was brought by Rachel, who owns Happy Cakes Bakery. Go ahead and check them out on Instagram there. Such a beautiful cake and really gave our dessert table a focal point. So fun fact about my house, it's pretty big, but there's no actual dining space that's formal. So we often end up eating on our stools in the kitchen on the island. So having a sit down dinner this time around was really, really special. Whenever I think of Paris, I think of amazing meats and cheeses and breads. So of course, we jam-packed this table full of breads, most of which we saved later for lunches for our children because we can't eat that much bread. I made beef bourguignon, there was French onion soup, there were a bunch of other really great French-inspired dishes, but we still managed to dig into the desserts by the end of the night. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the video. I love these rosette cupcakes. The color is just so beautiful to look at. So definitely go and check them out on Instagram. Drop them a like, drop them a comment, and don't forget to follow them. And if you want to be the next subscriber submission on the video, then please follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram, where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo. Any and all dessert levels are welcome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys, and thank you so much for 72,000. Bye!